Hi Booktube, this is Johnny and this is a Monday night here in West Michigan. It is 9.50 at night. It is July, no, it's not July. It's June the 5th, 2017. It's 75 degrees inside my cell. It is a Monday night. I'm sitting here looking at my diary. I'm on page 500 uh, today. Tonight, tomorrow, if I am still living in the land of the living, still rejoicing in Jesus, I'll be on page 501. So yeah, I mentioned uh, I was going to get some books in the mail, and they came in the mail today, and I thought I'd show them. I got the four volumes of the works of William Perkins who was the father of English Puritanism. I have a little, this is a little uh, bite-sized biographies on William Perkins by Joel Beakey and Stephen Uli. And it says here that William Perkins was born in 1558. He died in 1602, earned a bachelor's degree in 1581 and a master's degree in 1584 from Christ College in Cambridge. During those student years he joined with the Lawrence Chatterton who became the pastoral personal tutor and lifelong, <laughs> lifelong friend. Perkins and Chatterton met with Richard Grinham, Richard Rogers and others in a spiritual brotherhood at Cambridge that espoused Puritan convictions. From 1884 until his death, Perkins served as lecturer or preacher at Great St. Andrew's Church in Cambridge, a most influential pulpit across the street from Christ College. He also served as teaching fellow at Christ College, catechized students at Corpus Christi College on Thursday afternoons and worked as a spiritual counselor on Sunday afternoons. In those roles, Perkins influenced a generation of young students, including Richard Sibbs, John Cotton, John Preston, William Ames, Thomas Goodman, and William Ames. Thomas Goodman wrote that when he entered Cambridge, six of his instructors who had sat under Perkins were still passing on his teaching. Ten years after Perkins' death, Cambridge was still filled with the discourse of the power of Mr. William Perkins' ministry, Goodwin said. Perkins influence, Perkins influence as a theologian continued unabated after his death. This was due in large part to the widespread popularity of his writings. His writings were translated into several European languages and greatly influenced British and American Reformed theology the Dutch Further Reformation and European Pietism. So yeah, I got this William Perkins, and many years ago, uh, I bought this uh, commentary on Galatians by William Perkins. This is a vaccine, which means that it was a photocopy of a edition that was published and what year was it published? 1617. See, so you look at the print. See how it is? It's called. It's like it was in the 17th century. So I bought this many years ago uh, because the, the complete works of William Perkins were not available. This was published in 1989. They also published this commentary on Hebrews 11, a 1609 edition. You can see it's a photocopy of, of the, see how it is? Very difficult to read. But, and also, uh, Banner Truth Trust published uh, Williams Perkins treatises on preaching, the art of prophesying, uh, which is very famous. You have in here 
the art of prophesying, one, the art of prophesying, two, the word of God, three, the contents of scripture, four, the interpretation of scripture, principles for expounding scripture, six, rightly handling the word of God, seven, use and application, eight, varieties of application, nine, the use of the memory, 10, preaching the word, and 11, public prayer. This is a very famous little treatise on preaching that has influenced reform and Christian preachers for centuries. So yeah, I was excited to get in the mail the four volumes, and there's a 10 volumes in the works of William Perkins. I think they're, they published four this year. They're going to publish four, I don't know, three or next year, and then they're going to finish it in 2018, all ten volumes. Here you have the contents of the ten volumes of the works of William Perkins. Volume one, Digest of Harmony of the Old and New Testaments. Treatise, Combat Between Christ and the Devil, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. And then you have in volume one, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 and 7. Five, Matthew chapter 5 through 7. Uh, the first four volumes are exegetical works where William Perkins uh, expounds certain portions of scripture. Here he, uh, like for example, here in volume one, he expounds the Sermon on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 5 through 7. And volume 2 is a commentary on Galatians, which I just showed you is this. But here, it's a modernization text, so it's a lot easier to read. And uh, so, yeah. There's also in here, I don't know if this is, has it in here, let me see here. Let's see here, chapter six was not completed by Perkins, I don't think, no. See, chapter six was completed by another Puritan. His name was, well, it says here, his name was Cads, Codsworth. So, there in chapter 2, I mean, not chapter 2, volume 2 of Williams Perkins' works is uh, his commentary on Galatians. And then in volume 3 of William Perkins' works is his commentary on Hebrews 11. So in a way, I'm, I was kind of reluctant to buy these, but I got a deal on them. Uh, uh, Dr. Beakey uh, cut the price down $70. So I got them for 130 So that was not too bad. And here in, chap in volume four of Williams Perkins' works, you have an, an exposition of Jude, an exposition of Revelations 1 through 3. And then you notice, you see it says here, exegetical works. And then volumes 5, volume 6, and volume 7 are doctrinal and polemic works. Like volume 5, which will come out, I think, next year. Foundation of Christian Religion, Exposition of the Creed, Exposition on the Lord's Prayer, Volume 6, The Golden Chain, The Matter and Order of Predestination, Treatise on God's Free Grace and Man's Free Will, Fruitful Dialogue Concerning the End of the World, Against Alexander Dixon on Memory, like I'm by, in Volume 7, Ro Roman Catholic, Problem of Forged Catholicism, and warning against a, a idolatry. And what we have in volumes 8, 9, and 10 are practical works. So you have exegetical works, one through volumes 1 through 4, 
Doctrine of Polemic Works, Volumes 5 through 7. And then in 2018 or 19, uh, they're going to publish his Practical Works, Volumes 8, 9, and 10. So it's a, it's a lot to commit myself to, but I figure, why not? I spend this, I can, I can buy a volume every couple of months, you know, I'll probably go for $50. I spend that much on a couple of CDs. So yeah, that's why I got in the mail today. I got William Perkins, the father of English Puritanism. I'm looking at those tonight. I got out my Puri my William Perkins material to look at. So, yeah, I got a lot to look at, you know. It's probably, let me see. The first, it's probably around, let's see, volume one is 770 pages. Volume 2 of William Perkins' works is 627. Volume 3 is about 435. Volume 4 is around 669. So I got a couple thousand pages of Puritan spirituality, English Puritan theology, well, exegetical work. So, not to keep my mind busy for a couple of days as I wander through this wasteland. Not much is going on today. Today I got a haircut, you notice. Got my beard trimmed. Uh, I don't know what I read this morning. I, I mowed the lawn today. I did lawn work. I did get, I did go to a couple of thrift stores and got a bunch of books, but I'll show those. This morning I read my Reformation commentary in 1 Corinthians. And then I read that book, Leave Me Alone. I'm, I'm reading, finding, and losing myself in books. Now you can, you can find yourself and lose yourself in William Perkins. You can lose yourself and find yourself in reading God's Holy Word, though the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. And so that's what's going on here tonight. It's 10.03. I probably go to bed soon. Tomorrow's a Tuesday. It'll be June the 6th. Uh, next week is the Friends of the Library book sale. So I'm kind of excited about that. So I don't know what else to say except uh, thank you for the comments. Thank you for subscribing and check out the English Puritans. Uh, there's all kinds of Christian books out there, spiritual books, and you can't go wrong reading the English 17th century English Puritans. Uh, they loved the Bible. They loved Christ. They believed in salvation by grace. They sought to glorify God. They sought to live in obedience to the Word of God. And they just loved their neighbors. They were good family men. They loved their wives and their children. They, uh, they were just a great bunch of men and women. So, yeah, some say that uh, English Puritanism is classical Christian literature. So we have secular classic literature, and some consider the Puritans classic Christian literature, especially William Perkins. So until next time, I hope all is well. See you later.